Hello everyone. So uh, in previous videos, I had talked about uh, you know classical phenylketonuria. There we had uh, I had discussed uh, about the introduction part and the major sign and symptom associated with the classic phenylketonuria as well as the biochemical basis of the changes or the sign and symptoms which we see in phenylketonuria. So if, if you have not gone through uh, that video, kindly go through it. And in today's video, I will be talking about uh, the diagnosis and the treatment of classic phenylketonuria or PKU1. So the today's today topic would be diagnosis and treatment of classic PKU. It is also called PKU1, phenylketonuria 1. So as I had already told you, classic phenylketonuria 1 happens due to mutation in the gene coding for the enzyme phenylalanine hydroxylase. So how we can, once the sign and symptoms is present or when we are going for uh, you know screening of uh, phenylketonuria, so how that diagnosis can be made. So uh, there are various tests which were which are available. Uh, which uh, the sample of choice for those tests is uh, we generally do test uh, by taking patient uh, blood, or we can uh, uh, we can also use patient urine sample. But the only thing here which we keep in mind is the sample should be collected 24 hours after birth of the child because. After 20, once the child is born, the child, if, if, you, if you see the pattern here in uh, classic phenylketonuria, at birth, child is absolutely normal. So once that milk, mother's milk or formula based milk is introduced to child, which have high amount of, you know, protein and uh, that protein, uh, milk protein has high content of phenylalanine, then only that uh, level of phenylalanine in blood will build up. So the sample, a minimum duration or we can say the time of sample collection should be at least 24 hours after birth of the child. So that is when, when we are doing screening for phenylketonuria, so the sample should be collected after 24 hours, otherwise there won't be any uh, positive finding, okay, because mother milk have high content of protein and then that will lead to, you know, build up of phenylalanine inside the blood because the child is lacking if if the case is positive, obviously child will be lacking that enzyme called phenylalanine hydroxylase. So there we can get positive results. So the sample should be collected after 24 hours of the birth or uh, whether it is urine sample or uh, blood sample. So that is the important point uh, you should remember. Okay, so, uh, so the, the diagnosis part, under diagnosis part, the very first, uh, you know, uh, important test which was you know introduced for uh, screening of uh, uh, phenylketonuria in uh, neonates that was Guthrie test so this is the this is the first test where blood sample was used for screening of phenylketonuria okay and this was discovered by scientist called robert guthrie okay so the name has come from the scientist which have discovered this test so what what we do is, this is generally used for screening of phenyl uh, alanine hydroxylase deficiency or phenylketonuria in uh, newborns. Okay, so after uh, uh, after 24 hours of birth of the baby, this uh, uh, sample is collected by you know pricking the heel of the baby. So by heel pricking, the blood sample is collected and few drops are kept on this Guthrie card. So what is the principle of this Guthrie test? So it has been seen that there you are know, certain strain of bacteria called Bacillus, Bacillus subtilis. This Bacillus subtilis bacteria requires phenyl aniline, phenyl alanine as essential growth factor. Okay, so they require this phenylalanine as our essential growth factor. So without phenylalanine, this bacteria, certain strain of bacteria called Bacillus subtilis cannot grow. So if there is a suspected case or when we are going for screening of you know uh, classic phenylketonuria, so there what we can do is we can collect the sample after 24 hours and what 
we can do is after collecting few drops of that blood from by clicking the heel of the baby so if it is if this strain of bacteria is cultured and and obviously if child or the neonate has if the neonate has phenylalanine hydroxylase deficiency so the phenylalanine level in blood will be higher okay so the bacterial growth if the if if there is a positive case of uh, phenylketonuria bacterial growth will be directly proportional to the uh, uh, amount of you know phenylalanine present in blood of the patient okay so the bacterial growth bacterial growth will be directly proportional to the amount of phenylalanine in blood so if suppose if the patient has phenylalanine hydroxylase deficiency or newborn which which is going for the screening of this uh, uh, classic phenylketonuria so obviously in that case if suppose if in culture media if the bacteria bacteria is inoculated okay and phenylalanine from a blood sample of that child is collected and this uh, this is this is also introduced in the culture media so after few days there will be there will be higher growth of there will be more formation of that bacterial colony so that means that the test is positive so that the newborn or that neonate is suffering from phenyl phenylalanine hydroxylase deficiency so this was the very first test or screening test which was introduced to identify or to screen phenylalanine hydroxylase deficiency later on so many tests had uh, come and uh, you should remember that phenylalanine uh, in blood of in, if you uh, if you estimate phenylalanine level in blood of normal individual that is around 1 to 2 mg per dl this is normal range of phenylalanine in blood okay so the amount is very very less phenylalanine in blood that is normal in normal individual only 1 to 2 mg per dl of phenylalanine is present in blood okay but in case of you know phenylketonuria the blood phenylalanine level goes greater than 20 mg per dl so that will be on very higher side and uh, uh, we can uh, latest gold standard test which which is which has been uh, now it which has been used or is being used now is tandem mass tandem mass spectroscopy so this is the latest latest technique which we are using and this is the gold standard test to identify any type of hyperphenylalanemia okay whether it is classic or non classic phenylketonuria by using this tandem mass spectroscopy uh, we can identify different type of inborn errors of metabolism including phenylketonuria so in most of the developed countries nowadays in us and all and in europe they are going for the screening of phenylketonuria by using blood sample and with the help of this technique that is tandem mass spectro spectroscopy they are they are diagnosing this classic phenylketonuria or non classic phenylketonuria so this is the latest technique and the gold standard technique which is being used now okay apart from that you know uh, we can also uh, take patient urine you know and in urine as i have told you there will be increased level of phenyl ketones phenyl ketones in case of you know a classic phenyl ketone where there will be increased level of phenyl ketones in urine so we we what we can do is we can take the urine sample and of this patient we have which have high level of phenyl ketones like phenyl pyruvate and with that we can perform this uh, ferric chloride test ferric chloride test so when the urine when urine sample is mixed with this ferric chloride reagent that gives a transient bluish green color transient bluish green color is seen so that is also positive in in case of phenylketonuria patient so urine sample can be collected and that there we can perform this uh, uh, this ferric chloride test which will react with you know phenyl ketones especially with phenyl pyruvate to form what transient bluish green color so that is also one of the uh, one of the uh, part of diagnosis uh, but now it is it is not used since it is non specific so it can be positive for other uh, other substances also so but but mostly now it is the gold standard test is what we are doing is uh, we are identifying this phenyl ketonuria by using tandem mass spectroscopy so remember the normal range of phenylalanine in, uh, in blood is around 1 to 2 mg per dl 
But in case of phenylketonuria, the level goes up to 20 mg per dl. So usually it is higher than 20 mg per dl. If you uh, check the level of phenylalanine in blood of phenylketonuria patient. So now coming to the treatment part. So what uh, option we have in treatment? So treatment part, if you see, uh, in case of treatment, what we can do is the patient should have diet which have low amount of phenylalanine, of course. Because phenylalanine, our, the child's body or in a person body is not able to process phenylalanine because of deficiency of enzyme called phenylalanine hydroxylase. So they, the, the, the child should be given low amount of phenylalanine. And remember, early diagnosis is very, very important. You know, if the, the child is diagnosed at early stage, so the neurological complications like mental retardation uh, or, you know, uh, aggressive behavior and uh, 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 that like rhythmic rocking or purposeless hand movement that can be minimized to very large extent so early diagnosis will will give you a better option for treatment okay so low phenylalanine uh, low amount of phenylalanine should be there in diet so there you know then since phenylalanine is not getting converted into tyrosine so the tyrosine now here becomes essential amino acid so tyrosine should be given in diet tyrosine should be so tyrosine containing food which have protein which have high amount of tyrosine should be given in diet okay another approach to therapy is administration of large neutral amino acid administration of large administration of large neutral amino acid and this is very helpful why i am telling you the reason why large administration of large neutral amino acid like you know tyrosine tryptophan, methionine, leucine, isoleucine, valine can be helpful because these large neutral amino acid share the same transporter you know the, uh, for the transport across that blood brain barrier that I had told you in previous class, class that is uh, large neutral amino acid transporter type 1. So what we can do is for the treatment part if excess amount of you know this large neutral amino acid is administered so they there is a common co common thing because all the large neutral amino acid including phenylalanine share the same transporter okay so this is you know blood brain barrier so across this blood uh, the, here inside blood brain barrier we have this transporter called large neutral amino acid transporter type 1 so what happens all those amino acid whether it is phenylalanine tyrosine tryptophan valine leucine isoleucine share this same transporter okay so if large amount of this you know if high amount of this large neutral amino acid is that administered so that will compete with phenylalanine for binding site of this large neutral amino acid transporter one because they share the same transporter they will be kind uh, there will be kind of competitive inhibition for you know binding to this transporter so if large amount of or uh, if high amount of this large neutral amino acid is given so phenylalanine no longer will be able to bind with this transporter okay so the phenylalanine transport across the blood brain barrier inside the brain will be less so the phenylalanine content in brain will decrease so as i told you if you remember the main neurotoxicity effect of phenylalanine is responsible for all the neurological signs and symptoms which we see in case of you know phenylketonuria so if phenylalanine level in blood in brain will decrease that ultimately that will relieve that uh, you know, neurological sign and symptoms so that is the important part of this uh, treatment other approach to the treatment is there is one drug called Cuban that is the synthetic form of tetrahydrobiopterin. Cuban, the name of drug is Cuban. So there it is synthetic form of tetrahydrobiopterin. So that can be given, you know, that can be given to those patients because this tetrahydrobiopterin THB is a cofactor for enzyme called phenylalanine hydroxylase. So it will increase the activity of enzyme phenylalanine hydroxylase. So more amount of uh, you know that, in, that, will, that could be you know increase activity of phenylalanine hydroxylase due to this cofactor called tetrahydrobiopterin. So we can give this you know Cuban drug K U V V A N that drug is administered and that can lead to you know more formation of tyrosine from phenylalanine. So the obviously phenylalanine level in, in blood will be less so the complication will be or the signs and symptoms will be less severe and that can be also used as a treatment option. So 
I hope you understood the diagnosis and the treatment part of classic phenylketonuria. So thank you all for joining.